Hi, this is Jamie with Stonemeyer Games, and I'm here today to talk about my favorite game mechanism in Rick and Morty Total Recall. Before I do that, though, I want to thank a fellow Kickstarter creator, uh, John with Screech Dragon Studios, who has a project running right now, and he had some extra samples of his product, um, and he very kindly sent them to me. And I thought they were pretty cool, so I thought I'd share them here. What they are are glasses that can act as D20s. I don't know if you can kind of see it on this side. So on the glass, there's numbers one through 20. And so instead of rolling a D20, you'll take up a, a chug of your alcoholic or non-alcoholic drink. And uh, whatever the, wherever the, uh, the line, when you put the glass back down, whatever the line is on the, on the glass of where the, the beverage is, the liquid is, that's your roll. I just thought it was a fun thing. And, and it was really nice of him to send me these nice glasses. And so I will put a link to that project, if this sounds fun to you, um, right below this video so you can check it out. Now I did, I tried to keep this video on theme uh, and find a game that I play or own that uses a D20. And I actually realized I don't have any games that use a D20. Um, so I will be mostly using these just as regular drinking glasses until I find a game with a D20 that I love to play. Rick and Morty Total Recall does not have any dice at all. It's, it's a card-driven game. Um, and it's one of these large group social bluffing kind of deduction games um, with a weird theme. It's based on a specific episode of the television show Rick and Morty and where most of the characters in the game um, and in, the, in this episode have been taken over by alien creatures, but they look the same as, as like you can't tell by looking at them if they're alien or... Um, or just a normal person. And so a big part of the game is trying to figure out and eliminate the aliens while not eliminating the actual humans, the normal people, the characters. And everybody is a character in the game. Every player represents a character. And some, it's a team game, so it's, it's a hidden team game. So some players are actual uh, aliens or parasites, whatever it's called, and others are humans. And uh, the, the parasites are secretly trying to to eliminate the humans and the and the uh, humans are trying to eliminate the parasites, and it's uh, it's a good game. We had a lot of fun with it, and one of the most fun moments that happened during the game, or a number of fun moments, because this happens a number of times, is that there are certain times where your allegiance will change. It doesn't make that much sense thematically that you can have a parasite and then switch back to not having a parasite and then back and forth. That doesn't matter though, because it's really, really fun in the game when you have to switch. And the switching happens kind of randomly. Like you shuffle up some cards and you give one to one player, one to you, and, and then one, I think, to the middle of the table. And uh, it, so like you know who you were and how you were acting and the things you were doing based on your previous character. And then all of a sudden you have to act differently, even if you have the same thing, because people are gonna be more suspicious of you uh, after after this random switch and we just had we had a lot of fun with those moments in the game and I ha don't see that in too many um, large group social bluffing deduction games one game that does have that that I really enjoy is Good Cop Bad Cop uh, which is tied to a game called Leaders of Euphoria that will soon be on Kickstarter so I'll be talking about that soon um, but uh, but I really like American Rick and Morty as well how you can switch teams th during the game um, usually not by choice. Usually it happens just randomly, but I think there are certain times where you could actually choose to mix things up. Not necessarily choose your team, but choose to have the potential to, to be on a new team. And that makes it, just makes for a really unique experience. Within the same microcosm of one game, you can be on multiple teams and allied with, with multiple players, which I really enjoyed. So if you can think of another large group social bluffing deduction game, or any game with teams, where you actually switch uh, teams during the game. Um, I'd love to hear your example in the comments of, of a game that does that. Thanks.